Today's tutorial is brought to you by Vowels. If you'd like to buy a vowel, they're only $250 each and they come in several varieties. What we're gonna do here is create a ball that could squash and stretch independently from the rotation. So this is the, the main idea here. We could stretch it and it rotates. Um, and then we get, you know, we could do stuff like this a little bit easier where we have not just a ball, but a ball if it has um, detail on the inside, then we need a little bit more extra control to handle that rotation. So let's see how this thing works. Let's start off. Our first step is to, uh, well, not for you, but for me is to start off with a new scene. And then let's just talk about the source file here. So this needs to be vector artwork. And I created this in Affinity Designer. You could use whatever vector program you want. At least I think you could. Uh, I've only tested out on this one. But the main goal is you have a circle that's perfectly round and you also have your circle touching the edges of your artboard exactly so my artboard is snapped to my object or is my object snapped to my artboard who knows but i know that i exported this as a svg file and that svg i'm just going to drag and drop into my assets folder and then from there we'll bring it into our timeline it's a little bit big so i'm going to double click on it hold down alt and drag one of my scale values to proportionally scale that down and now i'm going to do a couple things that are going to go off your screen so it's going to be like magic um, but just worse so i'm going to click on this but uh, i'm halfway down the list and I need to go towards the bottom and click on something called Submesh. So this is a really long menu and it's hard to fit it on the screen, but uh, you just have to take my word for it. I clicked on Submesh at the bottom of that list and I'm gonna do that again. And I'm gonna click on the plus sign. This time I'm gonna do Squetch and Squetch is also uh, at the bottom of that list. And now these two things are our main kind of setup. So I'm gonna Alt, Double click on the squetch and let's look at our bulge so we could bulge this thing out and we can squash it down. But you see it's squashing from the center, which we don't want. So we just go from center to bottom and now you can see it. it's going from the bottom of the object, which is nice because that's going to be more realistic for something hitting the ground. And I want to look at my bulge settings by clicking on the graph and I'm gonna drag this handle down and this handle, let's say, um, let's say something like that. That's a nice, it's kind of flattening out as it's hitting the ground and that's really what a, a real ball would do. Uh, so, and let me just, you just go from zero. I think it, when it's when it's squashing down, it needs to push out a little bit more, so let's, not that, let's increase the bulge and let's see how that feels. All right, so that feels like it's maintaining its volume a little bit better as it gets pushed down. And um, all right, so the um, the reason why we added this sub mesh, if I alt double click on it, is because we have controls here for position, rotation, stuff like that. Rotation's the only one that I really want. And that, some issues here, but we're not going to see it squash down for a long amount of time. So it's okay if uh, we got a little bit of a extra deformation thing sticking out there uh, for this little black piece. But uh, yeah, so we just we just rotate and we don't really worry about anything else here. Uh, you know, we could uh, move this, but that's probably going to throw things off later on. So just figure that you're only going to use rotation here. And uh, yeah, you could see if we do that, everything works. The rotation is maintained. And if we, let's just reset, reset. Okay. And if we come in here to our regular SVG, the, the, the original object, and we try to rotate that, we're gonna get this rotation, which we don't want, because that's gonna look weird unless this is being kicked against the wall or something like that. And then we might want to rotate it, something like that. So it hits a wall and um, we have that control. But for now, it's just going to bounce on the ground. 
And um, yeah, so this is pretty much it. The the next thing, uh, this is my least favorite part of this. I, I couldn't figure out a way to get this to work other than pre-comping this. And um, so there, somebody else might know a better way, but this is the one that, that I found to work. So I'll just collapse this. And uh, actually, before I do that, let's um, let's bring this back to its regular shape. And that is that. So now we got composition one and we got our uh, source material. If I right click on this and I go to pre-compose, now we have composition two. So composition two, if I double click on that, you're gonna see it takes you into this window here. And uh, you probably don't wanna do that. So the trick is go to composition one and then alt double click on composition two. So then instead of diving into that new composition here, now we can just see its um, settings. And uh, so let's, let's, um, Let's move it, move it down and um, position Y. Let's bring this down here. Uh, and let, let's set some keyframes while we're here. And um, actually these we want to be later on. And now we're over here. Let's move this off the screen. Maybe that's coming a little bit too far to the right. Let's bring it back a little bit. And I think um, two bounces should be sufficient. So I'm just kind of moving it and then doing the in-between for the up point. And, um, and I'm sure this is gonna go really slow, but that's not, that's not bad for example purposes because you'll be able to see things a little bit more clearly. Um, and I think I'm at the default 25 frames per second, which is also um, not bad because if we did something like 60 frames per second, it would just be a lot more work for kind of a precise animation like this. So uh, we wanna look at the Y position in the graph editor and just fix that. So we, we know we want this one and control click this one. And we hit this button here to give ourselves some tangent handles, and then we um, stretch these things out so we get a little bit of a, more of a hold at the peak, and let's just see how that feels. It feels very slow, but the movement's pretty realistic. So let's go with the, um, Go back into, and this, this is the part that's kind of annoying is we have to go between these compositions as we're animating, but the results are good. So I'll, I'll live with that. I'll double click on composition two and we'll expand this out here. And uh, so we, need, we want some rotation and I will, uh, I'll double click on this. We'll set a keyframe for rotation and now here's where the back and forth comes because I got to remember in composition one uh, where our animation ends, which is at 130. So I'll give it a few more keyframes of rotation. And so 136, but if I move my timeline here and then I double click on my comp two, you'll see the, uh, the time slider uh, doesn't stay in that same spot. So I just have to remember that number 132 or five or whatever, it's close enough. And then I can rotate, uh, I don't know, let's just call that good. I'll go into the graph editor and give this rotation a bit of a fall off. And going back into composition one, we'll give this a play and we'll see that we've got a ball. We've got a ball that's bouncing. Rotation stops a little too soon, but that's all right. Uh, and um, now we just got to um, say here, it hits the ground at this point in time. And we are, well, actually, let's go into the um, 
timeline here. So it hits the ground, and then the next frame is where the squash should start, which would be 55. So let me, um, let's zoom in here so you can see this a little bit more clearly. All right, so it hits the ground here. We want to hold it on the ground for a frame. So I just select this command, or control C, control V. So we got it staying on the ground for a frame. And yeah, and that's it, because it, it doesn't have any more bounces. Uh, so zoom out again. All right, so I, I know at frame 55 is where I want my squash to start. So I jump into composition two. You might want to name these uh, to be a little bit more effective. Uh, and so now I have to remember what I just said. I think I said 52. So frame 51, we'll set a keyframe on our squetch and We'll keyframe the strength and then 52. We'll set this to that value. Then maybe we'll go a few frames and set this back to zero. And we could look at the graph editor. I'm not going to do anything too fancy. I'm just going to go quickly here. Um, actually, let's add tangent handles for all these. Press F to frame it up. Yeah, I had a feeling that might be the case is a little bit extreme here. Let's see if I bring that in. Click this hand. Oops, they want to move that. Got to click the handle. The the graph editor has definitely been improved improved from the last version, but it's a little bit buggier. All right, um, but the features are much improved. Uh, all right, I, I'm gonna guess that's gonna be good enough. Okay, so now we could jump back over here. Hopefully I got that timing right. No, I did not. Um, so let's go back. So hits hits the ground here. It should start to squash at frame 55. And I just have to make that adjustment. So 50, looking over here, 57, 55. So 55 is just when it needs to start. And I'll just slide this over here. And hopefully we've got something that works. So you want to hit the ground round and then the next frame you could do the squash and we've got a squash that and it's kind of fast but we've got a squash that works with rotation i'll just play this a little bit slower so this is nice as many bounces as we have we just have to go get the timing here take note of this number uh, 131, so I know on 132 is where I would have to come in here if I wanted to uh, just probably control C and find find the spot where I want it and paste that for my um, uh, consecutive bounces. So that's pretty much it. And um, like I mentioned in the beginning, Somebody will probably know a better way or find a better way eventually, or maybe I will. But this is what I've been able to figure out now for this type of ball rig.